Welcome to IVF This, Greatest Hits Episode 4, The Worry Bin. Welcome to IVF This. I'm your host, Emily Ginn. After 10 years of primary and secondary infertility due to both male and female factor infertility, I am now the mother to three beautiful miracles. I am married to my favorite person in the world. I'm a social worker, a life coach, and an IVF warrior. I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and emotions during your IVF journey, to break free from anxiety and regain control of your life, even in the midst of infertility. I'm going to teach you how to say IVF this to how we think about, talk about, and experience infertility. Let's go. Hello, 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 my beautiful friends. I hope you are having an amazing start to 2023. I'm having a little bit of a difficult time processing that it is already 2023, but here we are nonetheless. (laughs) A couple of big announcements. So number one, I want to remind you if this is the first time you're hearing one of the greatest hits episodes, this is only the fourth one we've done, but the idea is to go back through the 100 plus episodes of IVF This that we've already done and bring some of the older content that is still really popular but bring it back to the forefront or the top of your podcast feed. The Worry Bin, the episode that's on docket for today, is a really amazing episode, if I do say so myself. It's a little bit of a humble brag, but I can take it. But the idea behind the Worry Bin is to help you prioritize your worry time while also helping you recognize your own empowerment, understanding where you do and where you do not have control, which I think most of us forget about or maybe even have never learned about. But that's okay. That's what we're here for. So I am planning in the next few months to do an additional, like a 2.0 version of this episode. I'm still putting together some of the pieces of what I want to say, but that'll be Worry Bin 2.0. So I think this is a great time to remember or be reminded of, re-listen to, or be introduced for the first time to this concept called the Worry Bin. So that's number one. Number two is my open coaching call that I do the second Tuesday of every month at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern is on January 10th this month. So again, it's an open coaching call. You can come with any concept you want to talk about. Usually there's a topic I come to talk about. Sometimes I plan it, sometimes I don't. But the idea is that you can come and get coached on anything. You can join anonymously and ask questions in the Q&A. You can join and be asked to be coached. There's an option on the webinar to raise your hand to be coached. You have the choice of being coached like on screen (laughs) where we can see each other or sometimes um, people don't really want that. They don't want to be on screen. It's totally fine. I keep the recordings just for me so I can go back and kind of take nuggets or listen to my own coaching, but I never publish them anywhere, but you can do that. You can join uh, without being seen. The screen would be black and we could just hear your voice. It's entirely up to you. There's a lot of different ways to show up. Sometimes just showing up and listening and hearing other people's stories, other people's experiences, hearing them being coached, that is a tremendously valuable asset. So I want to invite you to join. If you're on my mailing list, first of all, if you're not, you should be, but if you're on my mailing list, you'll get an email the morning of with the link to join. Uh, If you're on my social media, either Instagram or Facebook, it's in my link bios. It's a link in my bio for the open coaching call. You don't have to register. There's, There's nothing like that. You just click the link at the time of the session, at the time of the webinar, and you're good to go. So that's the second thing. So the third thing, which is Also something that I'm really, really excited about. In the third week of January, I am going to be launching another round of my group coaching program. So if you have heard about this, I've only done two or three group coaching sessions from the kind of the start of my program, but this concept, this group coaching program takes into account everything that I've learned in my thousands of hours of coaching women going through fertility treatments, experiencing infertility. We coach on everything. We don't just stay focused on IVF or fertility treatments, infertility. We coach on marriage, self-worth, even work, like your career, things like that. We coach on relationships, we coach on everything. And it's such a powerful experience because you, again, are getting to hear other people being coached. It's much easier to see 
how to coach yourself when you're listening to other people coach, because you're not the one caught up in your own story. So it really is a remarkable thing. So again, if that is all that information is going to come through my email list. So if you're not on my email list, please go to www.ivfthiscoaching.com. On the homepage, you scroll down about three quarters of the way, you'll see a three simple steps for managing anxiety course. It's a mini course that I offer. Sign up for that. You'll get the mini course. You'll be on the email list. It is all good. Also, you could go to my social media links again um, on my bio, and there is a link for the free mini course. Same principle. You get the course. You sign up for the email list. All is good. So those are the three things. Number one, the greatest hits. I hope you enjoy this. Number two, the open coaching call on Tuesday, January 10th at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then third, check out my emails forthcoming about my group coaching program. If you're not on my email list, get on it now so that you don't miss out on any of this. This is one of my cheapest offerings. So it's 13 weeks. It's very similar to my one-on-one program. You're just going to be with other women who are experiencing the same things that you are. And we're going to learn how to create a different type of experience through IVF. It's going to be amazing. So I hope you come. So enjoy this episode, The Worry Bin, and I will talk to you soon. Hello, hello, everyone. I am so happy that you're joining me today because we're going to talk about something that gets me really fired up. So uh, buckle up, folks. Before I get into that, I want to share something with all of you. I received an email from an IVF This listener, and it was so beautiful and impactful for me that I have to share with all of you. So here it is. Hello, I don't usually do this, actively reach out to others, but Spotify recommended one of your podcast episodes to me on a particularly low day last week. On a whim, I listened to it, emotional cushioning, and it was exactly what I needed to hear. I had been carrying so much guilt and feeling cynical and negative, and it started to convince myself that maybe I didn't want a baby bad enough. I had started going back and listening to the rest of the episodes, and it's allowed me to start forgiving myself and allowing myself to be okay with feeling the grief in this process. So thank you, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. Each episode I listen to on my commute helps me to come to terms just a little more with what I'm going through. I'm on a few different IVF forums on Facebook just to stay a little sane, and I recommend your podcast to a lot of the other IVF warriors who seem to be in the same boat as me. I hope it helps them as much as it's helping me. Listening to more episodes tomorrow. Sincerely, a new and grateful fan. Uh, This is just incredible. First of all, uh, I want to address the person who actually wrote this. And as someone speaking for myself who typically also does not reach out directly, I'm so, so grateful and thankful that you did. And I want to commend you for taking that leap and, and putting that out there. And my gratitude is so immense for you right now. Second, anyone who is offering this podcast to those people, to anyone else in IVF groups or on Instagram or just conversations that you have with your doctor or with anyone in the waiting room of the fertility clinics, thank you. Just, just thank you. Word of mouth, ratings, reviews, that is how podcasts become discoverable. This is how we change the game of infertility and IVF. You know, I like to talk about how I flip the script on infertility. And that's literally what we're doing. And you're a part of that too. Every time you recommend or rate or review this podcast, you are a part of flipping that script. You are changing the life of that person. And I want to make it clear, I'm not specifically talking about me. I know that I'm not for everyone. Like, I get that. Most of the people who listen to this podcast are never going to pay me money to coach them. And that's totally fine. But the first time I listened to one of my coaches' podcasts back in 2015, when I was first introduced to this type of coaching, everything changed. And it was several more years that went by before I actually paid that coach anything. I listened for two or three years before I ever paid her a dime. But it was in that moment that I knew I wanted something different from my life and that doing more of the same wasn't going to get me there. You're never really the same 
once your brain is kind of been cracked open and you start looking at things from a different perspective, and that's the power of coaching. So thank you to anyone and everyone who has ever recommended this podcast. And if you haven't yet done it, please go on whichever platform you're on and rate and review it because that is how other people are going to find this information. And that's how this, this whole conversation is going to change. Okay. So let's dive into worry. This is one of the most common things that my clients, and I think just about everyone in general, uh, when it comes to infertility, uh, do, and that is worry. I find that worry is one of the things that tends to be a surefire thing that will create a shit ton of suffering for us. So we're going to talk about worry in terms of its usefulness and not so usefulness. And I'm going to give you a technique that I have used that helps me manage my worry and just how worry impacts so much of our lives, just in general. The first thing I want to make sure we know is that worry is something that most of us do, especially when there are things in our lives that we feel are out of our control. So hello, infertility and IVF. I think our worry always stems from a thought like, we can't do anything about this. We worry because we keep thinking, I don't have any control over this. And that triggers a sense of helplessness. And when we feel helpless, well, then we worry. For me, I believe that worry is an action that you take, not necessarily a feeling. I think for many of us, we would describe it as a feeling, like I feel worried. But I also think of it as something that you're doing, So we worry as if it's going to fix something or that it's being productive. There are a lot of people that think that there are some things that we're just supposed to worry about. And I'll talk a little bit about that coming up. So many of us think, well, I just can't help but worry. One of my best friends comes to mind, and she comes from a very long line of wonderful but devoted worriers. And she told me, She doesn't know what she would do if she didn't worry. Like it's just a fact of her life that she'll always be a worrier. But here's the problem with worry. When you start worrying and nothing is changing, all you're doing is exacerbating the fear and uncertainty in that situation. When that happens, then we're starting to feel those feelings of fear and uncertainty and feeling out of control. And so we turn to things outside of us to help us feel better. Food, alcohol, social media, shopping, sex, whatever, all in an effort to avoid feeling feelings. Some of us may be constantly focusing on reading every single article we can find about infertility, IVF, the process, remedies, supplements, whatever. Maybe you're taking a fistful of supplements every day, but you're still convinced that you're not doing enough to get pregnant. So many of my clients do this. Worry literally serves no useful purpose in your life. And I really want you to take a minute and think about that. At any time, does worry solve something for you? The answer is no. Like, that's a hard no. Hell no. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't solve for anything. No one has ever worried their way to solving a problem. No one has ever worried themselves out of infertility. No one has ever worried themselves pregnant. No one has ever worried blastocytes into a day five, four AA grouping, right? Or no one has ever worried an embryo transfer into sticking. Now, worrying gives you something to do. I'll freely admit that. Something to focus on, but with no payoff. Worrying, in a lot of ways, comes from being unwilling to take ownership over what you're feeling and accepting that you ultimately have control over certain things, don't have control over others, and really understanding that you have more control over things than you think. If We get to the point where when things happen to us, we deliberately slow down and are intentional with how we want to show up for it versus just reacting to things and worrying about them, reacting with anger, trying to make ourselves feel better, right? We just want to be able to slow down and deliberately decide, okay, I know what I'm going to do with this. I know how I can approach this. 
that allows you to have control over what is controllable rather than just constantly feeling like you're out of control and worrying. So here's my technique. It's called the worry bin. It's not a fun name. I love it. Now, some of you may have heard something similar to this if you work with kiddos, like the worry jar or the worry bucket, right? It's a similar concept. I have a little bit of a different spin on it. So this is all based on the understanding that some shit is going to happen in your world. If you are going into or currently in the middle of an IVF cycle, maybe you're pregnant with your IVF or rainbow baby and you're worrying over the pregnancy, maybe your partner said something to you and you're worried about that, or like it's whatever the thing that you're worried about, job, money, whatever. I don't have to know the specifics of what you're worried about for this to work, okay? So first step, I want you to start with paper thinking, which is the term that I use for journaling. Right? So that's step one. I want you to write down all of the things that you're worried about. Literally all of them. Even if you're worried about how it may seem trivial or how it isn't relevant to infertility or IVF or that it sounds stupid, there's no judgment. There's no need to judge. You're writing down all of the things that are just banging around in your head. That's it. Don't avoid putting something on your list because of your judgments about it. I want you to give yourself a good 10 to 15 minutes to write it all out. It is so important that you get all of the worries out of your head because you need the awareness of how much you're actually worrying. Understanding and being aware of the things that you're thinking about is the single most important thing you can do to take control of your thoughts and feelings. Okay, that's step one. Step two, then you take that first list And from it, you pull out all of the things that you can actually do something about, right? Here's the list of things that I can actually impact. That's step two. Step three, make a list of things you have literally no control over. Things like how many eggs your doctor is able to retrieve, how many will fertilize, how many will reach blastocyte phase, if your embryo will stick or not, staying pregnant, Worrying about these things is not helping you. You have zero control over these outcomes. So this only creates misery for you. Worrying about the things which you have no control over only impacts you and your ability to show up in your life in any meaningful way. Okay, so that's step three. Now, you're going to take your two lists and in step four, I want you to take the list of things that you can actually impact, things that you can actually help. And you're going to brainstorm how you can do those things. This puts you into the driver's seat and allows you to take yourself out of the place where things are happening to you and put yourself in the intentional position of knowing that these are the things, the steps that I can take to make this better. What this does Even if you're not ready to take those steps that you're writing, right, it gets you into brainstorming mode and it curbs the stress and helplessness that comes with thinking there's nothing you can do about these things or wondering what's going to happen or what if this or what if that. This will help you shift your perspective to the things that you can have an impact on. When you're brainstorming and solving your problems, you know what you're not doing You're not worrying. You're not continuing to go around and around and stewing and dwelling and ruminating and feeling like a helpless victim to your life. The more we can get out of victim mode, the better. The more present you are going to be in your life, the better you're going to feel. Like feeling like a victim feels like shit, y'all. Wow. (laughs) I forget sometimes that People might not know that I'm from Texas. And a lot of people can't tell that I'm born and raised in Texas um, because I don't really have the stereotypical accent. Woo! Really came out there, y'all. Mm, sorry about that. But when you're worrying, guys, I want you to take notice of that. Like a red flag or like a check engine light on your dashboard. Like maybe I'm I'm feeling like a victim in my life. And you can repurpose that energy around, okay. These are the things that I can actually deal with, and this is what I'm going to do. And so now you have a way to deal with them. I just want to remind you that there's no upside to worry. None. 
There is no upside to believing that you don't have any say in how or what you think, because you always do. You always have a say in that. We don't have to love infertility and IVF. That's not what I'm suggesting. We don't have to love that this is the journey we're on. We don't have to enjoy everything that life throws at us. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you don't have to feel like there's nothing you can do about it. You don't have to feel helpless. You're not. That's bullshit. You don't have to think that things are terrible or that they're happening to you. You can think, I don't like that, but worrying about it will not make it any better. So I'm going to actively look for ways to take charge of myself. And the best way to do that is to get into brainstorming mode. I'm going to figure out a way to solve my fucking problems and not let my problems rule me. The quicker you learn how to do that, the faster you change. Like seriously, the time and energy that you put into worry can actually be used for you to get done the shit you actually want to get done in your life. Worry doesn't have to be a benchmark or an expectation of IVF. I mean, there's a lot of things that we worry about. There are a lot of possibilities and what ifs that come with this. Worry doesn't have to be one of the hallmarks of IVF. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we can worry about, but knowing that you have the option of worrying about it or not is important. So look for where your worry is showing up. I promise you this is a huge key to feeling better. Realizing that worry feels shitty and accomplishes nothing, God, that is just so important to know. It's truly one of the most helpful things that you can do for yourself. Okay, so step five. You take your list of the things that you can do nothing about. Let's say you're in your two-week wait for the blood test. Worrying about the result is not going to change the result. My RE, who I love because she's as straight a shooter as they come, says the embryo will either implant within the first 48 hours or it doesn't. Full stop. There is literally nothing you can do to make that happen And we cannot change it if it doesn't happen. So rather than spending time worrying about the outcome, what can you do? Can you take time and meditate, do yoga, paper think, cry when you need to, laugh when you want to, connect with your partner, your kids, your family, your friends? What can you do? Now, I know this seems like something that is not even possible for you, right? It didn't feel possible for me either. I, I can just see you guys questioning like, Emily, how the hell am I not going to be worried during my two-week wait? Or when I'm worried for my blastocyte report? Or waiting with bated breath between doctor's appointments just to make sure that the heartbeat is still there. I get it. I do. But it's so important to see how easy it is to slip into one of those, if not the most ineffective way to live your life. So you take this list of the things that you cannot control. If you're dead set on continuing to worry about them, which is not a problem, I'm not asking you to give up your worry at all. What I'm suggesting is that you schedule time to worry about them. Like legitimately think of a time during the day when you can dedicate 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever. Dedicate it to worrying about those things. It is the intentional focus time that makes this different. You are intentionally focused on what you're worrying about, why, and when you're going to worry. So when you're kind of gathering these things to worry about, you put them in your worry bin, right? I love how it ties in the title of the episode. You put it in your worry bin and you come back to it when you say you will, and you spend time on it then. It doesn't occupy your time otherwise. Now your brain is going to have a temper tantrum or a hundred. That's okay. Let your brain scream and shout. It's not a problem. You're training your brain to know that you are in charge. You hear it's worry. And at 5 p.m. on my commute home, I'm going to worry about it. Like we can just let all of the warning flags, all of the danger, all of the fear just fly. 
And you know what? When it is your designated time, let her rip. Worry the shit out of yourself. It's totally fine. This will feel incredibly unnatural. It will. 100% honesty here. I felt like a complete idiot the first few times I did it. But I kept going. So the first few times I did it, I would tell myself, I hear you thought, and you're going to go in the worry bin right now, and I will worry about you at 7 p.m. tonight, right? Doesn't matter the time. It did not feel natural for me. And you know what? It kind of took the, for lack of a better word, the fun out of worrying. Once that time came around, I was like, well, shit, now I don't want to worry. Now that I can, now that I've given myself space to, I, I don't want to. And I know if you're diligent, this will happen for you as well. And just like for me, if you do this at some point, and it happened for me a few weeks, maybe a couple of months into this practice, you're going to get to intentionally tell yourself, I'm not going to worry about this. There's nothing I can do. And I'm not going to sacrifice my peace, my life, my presence, and my intention for something that I cannot control or solve. It's going to take some practice, but it is possible. Now, it's also important to know that this doesn't eradicate worrying. Worrying thoughts are still going to come to your brain. The what ifs are are still going to be there. It just means that you're not going to make it a problem. Like you're not going to entertain them the way that you do now. There are no rabbit holes to go down if you don't entertain the, the thought. Another thing that a lot of you guys do is that you will argue for your worry. You'll defend your misery. I love it when my clients try to argue or justify or defend their misery. Like defend why worrying is important or unavoidable. And I always tell people, you can keep that story. You can keep whatever story that you want. But I'm just going to ask you something. Do you want to win the argument that you should spend time being miserable and worry? Or would you like me to offer you some options of learning to stop doing this? It's totally up to you. What if you went to work on improving your life? What if we worked harder on that rather than spending time justifying our misery? Because that's what worry creates for us. Misery. So if you fight like hell to justify and keep your misery and worry, do you know what your prize is, friend? Misery and worry. You don't win shit, right? That's not the prize at the bottom of a Cracker Jack box that you want. Staying locked into this pattern, you might as well give yourself a beeline to the fridge or to debt because you're buying clothes or getting lost on social media, barking at your friends and family, all of those things. Because that's what happens when we argue for our pain. Think about that for a second. Like, really think about it. How much time do you spend arguing for your misery? Arguing for your limitations? Arguing for that lesser version of you? Pain is an inevitable part of our lives and in many ways an inevitable part of infertility. But worry is wholly and completely unnecessary. That is not some shit you should continue to voluntarily sign up for. It is useless. It keeps you from grieving. It keeps you from happiness. It keeps you from problem solving. It keeps you from controlling your life. It keeps you in victim mode. It keeps you in overwhelm. For those of you who are expert level worriers, one of the first things you'll tell me is I'm so overwhelmed. And so you worry. But worry doesn't do anything. So then what happens? More shit gets loaded on the pile, but never dealt with or addressed. You're just increasing the stuff that you need to do and the things that you're thinking about. Take that step into action. Write it down. Write the steps that you want to take to take control of your life. And then release the ones that you can't. So I want to go through the steps again. So number one, write down all of your worries, all of them. Do not hold back. If you're worried that the next time you go for takeout, they'll mess up your order, write it down. 
there is no such thing as a trivial worry because whether or not you want to acknowledge it or write it down doesn't mean you're not thinking about it. Doesn't mean you're not worrying about it. So if it's taking up space in your brain, let it take up space on paper too. Step number two is you take that first list and you break it into a list of things that you actually have control over. And then you make a plan for those. Then you make a list of the things you have no control over. And if you want to continue worrying about them, which you totally can, I give you 100% permission, then you put them in the worry bin and you designate a specific time of day to worry about them. It can be every day, three times a week, once a week, once a month, I don't care. Whatever is going to serve you best, but allowing yourself to purposefully worry is going to give you so much more control and so much more power back from all of the worrying that you've done as the thoughts have come into your head. So I hope this was helpful. Remember, worrying is not actually productive. It doesn't give you anything. So let's focus on the things that do contribute to your life, the things that do add value, and the things that do serve you. So always remember, I adore you and you have got this. Have a good week, my friends. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of IVF This. If you like what you've heard and want to learn more, head over to IVFThisCoaching.com. That's www.IVFThisCoaching.com.